What is up, you guys, and welcome back to another video, another Design Tuesday with Sandra. I'm going to give you guys a little SketchUp tutorial and show you how I, as an interior designer, use SketchUp for projects. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys the basics on how to build walls, floors, and download furniture models. So if you guys want me to show a part two and showing you guys how to apply custom materials and set up scenes and rendering, then give this video a thumbs up. All right, so let's get started. So first things first, I am going to open up SketchUp and I always use the architectural template. So I'm going to use click on that. And then right as you open up SketchUp, uh, you will notice that it always comes in with this little person. So you don't really need to use them. It's just kind of for scale. So I'm just going to delete him. And I'm just going to give you guys a brief introduction on the SketchUp interface. So over on the left hand side, you have all your tools. You have your pencil, paint bucket, eraser, you have your tape measure, all the basics that you need. All right, so in case you guys don't have this large tool set, um, I'm going to show you how to get it. So you're going to go to view toolbars and then you're going to scroll down to where it says large tool set, click on it, and then it will appear. So anything that you want to show, you can just go to the view toolbar over on the right hand side. SketchUp already has default library, so it has color, it has wood texture, it has, you know, metal, it has all sorts of materials that you can use in your model. And if you want to change the style that it's portrayed, so you can use construction style, you can use x-ray, you can use a hidden line, so you can change how you want your model to look like. And just like AutoCAD, it has layers. So working with layers is very, I would say, I would highly recommend working with layers because you can just toggle on and off what you need and don't need. And if you are rendering, you can change the time, the month um, for the sun location. If you make any scenes, and that is pretty much it for the default tray. So because I have V-Ray plugin, I have these extra toolbars located on the top. Um, so it's okay if you don't have it because we are not going to go over that today. All right, so now I'm going to file import the floor plan I am going to use. I got it off Pinterest, so it is not my design, just FYI. And I'm going to select the floor plan that I'm going to use, bring in. When you are importing floor plans, make sure that you have image selected and not texture. Texture is only when you are applying materials. All right, so now that I brought it in, I'm just going to click on it and drag it. And when you bring it in, it is not going to be in scale. So you're going to have to scale it yourself. It's kind of like the bummer part of SketchUp. Well, I mean, you always have to scale in whatever floor plan you bring in. So I always look for a dimension to follow. So we have a 24 inch diameter chandelier. So I'm going to press C for circle and this is going to pop up and I'm going to make sure that this circle has a diameter of 24 inches. And since SketchUp circle goes by radius, I'm going to type in 12. All right. So you see the size of the 24 inch diameter circle I just drew in and how the floor plan is huge. So I'm going to have to press S for scale. And I always use the corner buttons to scale it down or make it bigger. Never the center pieces um, because it just kind of distorts the floor plan and it just gives you a weird size. And wow, that looks like it's pretty spot on, you guys. That never really happens on the first try. All right, cool. All right, so we are going to start drawing in the walls. So you can either just go about tracing the walls that is shown there, or you can use the ruler guideline to help you. And that is what I am going to do. So I press T and I'm hovering over the green axis to bring in this ruler guide. So I'm just going to press and drag. And I'm going to get it as close as possible to the wall. That way it's a little more accurate. So I'm just going to go around and do that for all the walls and give it a thickness of five inches.
All right, now that I got all these nice guidelines, I'm going to press R for rectangle. And the great thing about SketchUp, it's, it's very similar to AutoCAD. When you are drawing something, it will automatically pinpoint the endpoints and the intersection. So it is very easy to just click and drag. All right, so now that's done, I'm just going to delete all the rulers just to make it a little more cleaner. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete these little lines because you see how I click that surface, only that little strip is highlighted. I want all of the little rectangles to be highlighted. So that's why I'm going to delete those little lines. That way nothing is blocking the surface. Okay, so now that I got that done, one other thing is in SketchUp, when you are drawing, sometimes the surfaces are going to be blue and you want them to be white. So I would triple click what you drew, right click on it, and reverse faces. That way it is shown white. And one thing, when I'm drawing, I like to have my walls and floors on separate layers. So I'm going to just move over the floor surface. I'm going to delete that little rectangle. All right, so I'm going to type in P so I can extrude these walls. So you see when you hover over, it highlights the surface and it has these blue speckles. That is a good sign. So you are going to want to click on it and drag up. And I'm just going to give this a height of 9 feet. So I'm just going to type in 9 feet. And then before I move that little floor surface over, I'm going to triple click on all that wall and make it into a group. Because it's just like, you know, AutoCAD, once you combine all those surfaces together, it's going to be one big, big block. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make that into the wall layer and assign it to the wall. All right, so I'm going to drag over the floor and I'm going to press P for push and I'm going to drag this down about six inches. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make it into a group and assign this and make it into a layer. All right, cool. We have the floor and the walls done. So now it is time to make the windows and door cutouts. So. You know how you can't really see the floor plan anymore? Well, toggle your x-ray style back so you can see. All right, so I'm going to use the rulers again for guidelines and just drag them as close as possible to where the window location is. And I'm just going to copy over those lines. And when you're copying something over or dragging something, make sure you are on the right color axis, either the blue, the green, or the red. Um, because if you're not, if you don't have a color shown, then it's gonna be floating in space. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing and do that for that sliding door that is shown. And I'm going to now drag a ruler horizontally um, and give it a height. And now I'm just going to press R for rectangle and hover over the guidelines to snap it on and make the windows. Now to make the cutout, press P for push and pull and you're going to push that backwards to the edge. You want, you're going to want to snap on to the edge of the wall thickness. That way it deletes it. And voila, perfect. So I'm just going to delete those rulers. Oh, so one thing is that ruler is grouped inside the wall. So you're going to want to triple click on the group and just delete that ruler. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for the doors. Alright, cool. So we got the doors and windows cut out and now it is time to start downloading models. So I'm going to go to the 3D warehouse and I am going to type in door and you can literally look through hundreds and hundreds of door models and styles. 
um, so whatever style you like. So I'm just going to scroll back up and click this door, just keeping it simple. I'm just going to drag it in and rotate it and move it to where I want it to be. You see how it just automatically snaps? Love it. Alright, so this door is not the size that I need it to be. So to scale it again, press S. And you always want to click on the center buttons, not the outer ones, because if you do the outer buttons, it just kind of distorts it. You see how it looks weird. So if you can't see the center button, press K and it will kind of give you that wireframe look so you can see through. And you can press K again to get rid of it. All right, cool. So now that we got our door in, I don't like the color. So I'm going to go to my material library, go to colors, select the white swatch. First, I need to double click into my model so that everything is highlighted. Click the white swatch and apply it. Easy as that. Perfect. So now I'm going to copy this door over to the other side and do the same thing and scale it down. So now we got our doors and I'm going to go back to the warehouse and type in window and just look for a style that I like. You can literally get lost looking through the 3D warehouse. I'm going to scale it down and change the color just like I did with the doors. The last and final step is I am going to download furniture models to match the layout that is shown. And I am also going to change the material and color of all the furniture pieces and make it white. That way it just looks very clean and doesn't look crazy with all the colors that it comes in.
that is pretty much it for this tutorial you guys I just wanted to keep it very simple and basic and not overwhelm you because I know SketchUp has all these advanced features I just wanted to show you how simple it is to construct walls and a floor and download furniture models um, and like I mentioned earlier like this video if you want part two or comment down below what you want me to show you next Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys on the next Design Tuesday with Sandra. Bye!